All right, now let's talk about the find command. The find command is amazing. It really is. It is, um, it's very powerful and you can, the complexity of find is it has so many options because you can search for anything on your system based on dozens of different parameters. For instance, you can search for something by name. You can search for something by location. You can search for something by file type, whether it's a folder or direct. I only want to find a files. I don't want to find any folders with this name. Um, you can search for things by permission. Maybe you want to search all your files that have execute permissions. You can search for that. You can search for files based upon the time of day. Oh, you know what? I can't find that homework assignment that I did, but I know I did it within the last three days. So I want to search for every file that was newly created in the last three days. That could be helpful, right? Or you can use it as part of a backup script going like, hey, I just backed up everything last week. So I want to only copy any new things that happened within the last week. So any file that's been created in the last week, um, find those and then back them up, right? Um, so you can look under, and there are dozens of different parameters. You can look, search by size. Go, hey, my hard drive is filling up. Find the top five biggest files in my system. You can right? do a combination, right? And you can do a combination, right, to really fine tune exactly what you're looking for. So let's break this down a little bit of the find command. There are four parts to the find command. Okay, there's the command itself. Whoops. There is the directory in which you're searching. Now, this is kind of optional. If you don't use that, it's just going to look in the location where your, your current working directory, where you're at. Okay. So the find command will work without that, but I highly recommend for good practice that you always designate a location. Okay. Um, then you put a parameter to search like, what do you want to, what's the parameter you want to, do you want to search by the name of the file? Do you want to search for the size? Do you want to search for the permissions? Do you want to search for the username? So you want to search everything that belongs to Bob, that's user. Mm -hmm. Do you want to search for a permission type? What's the parameter you want to search by? And then following after the parameter, you give it the condition of the parameter or the value of the parameter. And this is what's going to change. For instance, here, we are looking for something in my home directory, home Jared, and we're going to search by the name of the file. And the name of the file that we want to look for is shopping.txt, right? Now, if we were looking for the size of a file, I would do find home Jared dash size, and then I wouldn't put shopping.txt. That wouldn't make any sense, right? you would put a size. I want anything plus, I don't know, 200 megabytes or minus 100 megabytes. And that will find anything under 100 megabytes, right? Or something like that. So the value that you put here at the end really depends upon what parameter you choose. Okay, so let's give you a few examples. Here we're looking for user. I want to find everything that belongs to Jared in his home directory, which should be everything, by the way, <laughs> right? Um, so find in home Jared, anything from user Jared. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you have those four, remember those four things, right? Here we go, here's an example by size. Find anything in our log file, var log or where your log files are. Search by size. Anything greater than 50 megabytes. This way we can see if our log files are getting too big. Right? So the last <clears throat> plus 50 is based on the parameter of the search. So, so yes. you size and for sketching. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yep. So it's, yep. Since we're using size, we can say plus 50 megabytes. Now, if, right. you, if you got rid of the size, would it just look for anything over 50 megs? Um, I, you might get an error. 
Okay. Because um, I think you need the parameter. Let's see if I just do find. I guess it does. It just search. It finds everything then, I guess. In that present working directory. Yeah, because I just did dot for the present working directory. Yeah, so it just find. So it's kind of useless, right? It just it's kind of like doing ls, right? Yeah. It just kind of finds everything. Um, so yeah, so I guess you don't need to have those options. Fine works by itself, but you know, it, like I said, you might as well just type ls or something like that. So that's size. We can search by type. So usually you search by type, and then this is the options for it. You usually either use a D for directories or F for files. I guess if you're looking for block devices or something like that, you can change it to a B or, or a C or B or something like that, right? This is all, um, yeah. So usually it's, like I said, D or F. I think there's some other options you can do for it, but I, I've only ever used D or F. Now, we can combine our search parameters, right? This is just multiple parameters, right? We still have find, we still have the location in which we're looking for. Now, if we wanted to look for our whole system, what would be our location? Uh, just the forward slash. Just forward slash, forward slash is your whole system, right? So yeah, but here we're specifying just the home directory. We're looking for something that is size greater than 100 megabytes. And so that's our one parameter with its value. Then we have another parameter with a value. We're gonna search by type for a file. So we're gonna look for just a file. We don't care about the directories. We only care about the full files. Oh, so this is three different, yeah, okay. It's three different, yeah. So we're searching for three different um, parameters, right? We're searching for size and file and M time is modified time. So when was the last time the file was changed? So that's kind of like, um, yeah, if you had a Word document and you changed it a day ago, this should be able to find it because you're doing a minus two. So the minus two is the last two days, less two days, right? If you did plus, that's at greater than two days ago. Oh. Right? So, uh, so with the M time, now there's different times. There's a create time. So you can do C time, which is when was the file created is C time, create time. Yeah. M time is modified time. And I think there's some, uh, there's um, an A time for access time. So when was the file just touched, looked at? So if you go into the man pages for find, will it that, tell you about these times? That is exactly what I was going to go to next. See, you're ahead of me already, Eric. I'm working with you, brother. There you go. So yeah, if you go to the man page, there are dozens of that. So just look in the man page and it will give you all the parameters. You have to scroll down a bit to the parameters. Um, let's give you a few options, keep going. Oh, you, and you can do certain levels. That's what kind of this is. So if like you have, you know, if you do your whole system, that's gonna take a long time, right? It's yeah. looking in every file or phone, but maybe you only wanna go down three folder levels or two folder levels. So there's an option to do how many folder levels down you wanna go um, because you so don't wanna- So the way that change. would work is you identify the level and then identify the type that you're looking for and then identify the parameter. And then could you use a, would you just keep typing or you wouldn't have to do commas like you did in the last one? You could just- No, no it's just through space. Go to the next level and then the next, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. And there's options here for max depth and minimum depth, you know, so there are, this just, as you can see, goes on and yeah. on and on. There's, so here, here are all oh, your you parameters go. that you can have. So, I mean, how many minutes ago was it accessed? Is this newer than something else? A times. I mean, it, so what do you do? Uh, there and, are just tons. Is, if it's just executable file, um, yeah, this is matching by name, but case insensitive, you know, um, by paths, if you're looking just for links or hard links. Um, I, it just goes on. And to be honest, I, there's only a set that I've used, you know, I use size, I use some of the times like create time or modify time. I use the type, I use the permissions one. So if you want to look for everything with certain permissions, um, but as you can see, there are just tons. And here the size, it, it helps you out a little bit with explaining how to use the size. 
of things. So a capital M for megabytes, a lowercase k for kilobytes and, and so forth. So the man page has the instructions. So here's the types, right? I told you usually I only search by directory or file, but you can look for other types, right? If you're looking for a symbolic link, use an L. Um, if you're looking for a block device, it's B, you know. Um, Oh my goodness, see, it just goes on. <laughs> so there, there are just tons and tons of parameters that you can search by using find, okay? So I'll demonstrate a few here. Um, for instance, I'm gonna do find, and I'm just gonna do my current location, and you can do your current location just as a dot. Also, if you, don't, if you skip that part, it will do your current location anyways. But like I said, I, I highly recommend you always put a location. Otherwise, you may confuse what your results are bringing back, right? You, go, you thought you were searching the whole system, but really you're only searching your current location, you know, type of thing. So I am going to look for um, anything named a book. And we can use wildcards or whatever else we want, you know. And I found book, right? Or you can specify it as well. See how wild cards start to come in way hand. All this other stuff we learned before is, is being applied and added to these other concepts and things like that, right? Um, we can search by permissions, right? Yeah. So find dot, I'm going to look permissions. Now, when you do permissions, um, you do have to do a backslash. I think it's backslash G. And I want to look for anything that has... Um, Right permissions in the group. Okay, so if it was about, other, has, you, you do other. Yeah, I'm doing. Is it a forward slash? Maybe it's a forward slash. Let's see. Oh, it is a forward slash. There we go. Yeah, it's a forward slash, not a backslash. There you go. So it has group with read, write, or other executables. Right. Let's make this um, group just read, write. How about just read? Seems to be all. How about just execute? Oh, that's a fewer. Okay, cool. that's a smaller list. There we go. I was trying to get a smaller list, right? So we, we look for permissions, everything else. Um, in, your, in your present working directory. That's in my present thing. working directory, current, right. I can, I can increase that, obviously, right? I can, I can substitute that. And you can, I can, that's my home directory, right? If I just do that, mm -hmm. or I can do home, Jared, right? And this should bring up a long list. So I should probably just do Perfect. head. Or pipe it to head. Yeah. Just do head. So I just get the top 10, right? Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Remember head, tail, all this kind of stuff, right? We, we're Where's using And I'm piping and I'm redirecting. And you can use it, all this stuff together. Mm -hmm. This is when things start getting exciting, guys. Because you can now, you guys know enough to do some really powerful, cool things, right? With your system. Um, I'm going to show you one other option that you can do with find because you, there's an execute option for find where what you can do is whatever you find, you can then tie another command to it. Like find all your files this size and back it up and move it over here and copy it or find all of your MP3 files and move them to your music folder. Find anything that was created in the last five minutes and delete it because I made a mistake or something like that, right? And I created like 20 files accidentally or something like that, right? So how do we use this execute option? So I'm gonna demonstrate it here with something really simple. I'm gonna move this MP3 file that I have here, right? I'm gonna search for everything that's MP3 and I'm going to move it to, I think I have a music folder up here somewhere. I have a music folder. Yeah. Well, I'll, yeah. So I have that. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use the execute option. So let me type the command, then I'll explain it before I actually execute it. So I'm going to look at my current directory. And I'm going to search by name. And anything that ends with an MP3. Right, so that's my option. I'm just gonna run that as is. So that found my MP3. Mm -hmm. But now I'm gonna add the execute option, EXEC. And then I'm gonna type the copy command. Well, should we copy or move it? Well, let's move it, right? Because that's more likely what you wanna do. 
save space. I'm going to move that. And whatever, now, this is the part where it starts getting weird. I'm going to use an opening and closing curly bracket to represent this, whatever the find returns. So it's whatever find finds, mm -hmm. that's what this is. And so then you to execute, you're saying I want to move. Yes. Okay. And I want to move that to music, right? To my home music directory, right? When you use those brackets with nothing in them, you're saying I want to move whatever was in the previous command. Yes. Whatever find found. Okay. Put it there. And here it's only finding one, right? Well, should right. I create more? Here, I'll create a bunch of MP3s, right? Okay. Touch music. And I'll do like G3. one, 10. Two different types. That way we can see that you left some behind. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, I can like do one to ten and like eleven to twenty, and, and leave eleven to twenty, and then we can see. Oh, well, he just moved the ten. Yeah, I can do that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we'll do that. <clears throat> so we have to change this. Then um, we'll do star, and we'll do. Um, or one to five. One, two, three, four, five, or something like that, right? Ah, okay. Let me make sure that works. All right. That we're getting what we want. One, two, three, four, five. Right. There we go. All right. Let me clear this so it gets up at the top. Okay. So now we're going to execute and we're going to move and we're going to move whatever it finds. Yep. And we're going to move that to my home music directory. And then this is where it gets funny. You always have to end it with a backslash semicolon. Mm -hmm. All right. That's just part of the syntax. I'm sure it means something. Sure. I don't know what it means. Um, but this is how you always end with the execute option. It probably just means end. That's the end of the execution. That's the, yeah. that's the end of the execution, right? Of sure. what I want to execute. Because you can do tons so of things. So maybe you could do more stuff after that. Is that you can. right? Or, okay. You absolutely can. So, um, so I'm going to run this as long if I don't get an error, it means it probably worked, right? I could type the ls command to just verify. Yep, I don't have music one, music two. It's all gone. Let me look in my music directory in my home. And there they are. So I did all of that in one command. It looks, it looks kind of scary and intimidating at first glance but when you're able to break it down to smaller pieces it all makes sense right yeah and that's really really what you do i mean you can get these really long commands where you're piping and redirecting and doing multiple commands but when you break them down smaller pieces it, it makes more sense and it's not as stressful right there's less failure i mean if you fail in one just small spot and you're like okay it's just right. this little spot and then you can test just that one, just like we did with the find option, right? I right. just tested out this part of the command to make sure I was going to get the result I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I added the execute part of it to actually execute it and deliver what I was trying to accomplish, right? Yep. So that is permissions and that's the find command. Two really awesome commands um, I would use all the time. Now, in your homework, you're going to learn about the locate command as well, which doesn't have as many features as the find command. It's a little bit more basic, but it is quicker than the find command because it builds a predetermined database of all the files um, before you search. So, for instance, let's see. I'll give you a quick demonstration of the locate command. So, you can do locate... I don't know, um, music. And it finds a bunch of, and see how fast that was? <laughs> it's pretty fast. Uh, and it, anything with a file. So apparently I have some icons or something like that, music icons, because these are all pictures. Anyway, I found tons and tons of stuff. The problem with, with locate is um, it has to update that database. Every so because it's all like it's already searched through everything yeah. and it builds a database of what it searched. So if I created a new file, because what I found in that, if I did the locate correctly, I don't think I found um, 
like grip music seven dot mp3. No, it didn't find that because I just barely created it. Oh. Right? So we have to update the database. And that's what this update command, update DB for database. That updates the local, oops, you have to be pseudo probably. That updates the database for locate. <coughs> so now it should be, and if now it found it, right? So it found that file that I just created literally minutes ago now, but it, so just, that's the one gotcha with locate. It's, it's, not, it's not as sophisticated. It's not as fine tuned as fine. Like you can't, there's not as many parameters to search for, um, but it is very fast. And uh, you do have to update the database though. Is update DB like a sync? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It just syncs. Then, it finds anything new, adds it to the database, and now you can find things really, really quick. Not to dwell on find too much, but you can find, and then can you pipe it to a new folder or a new directory or something? Or... Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you just want a list of like, yeah your music files or something like that? Like, 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 cause if you're piping or, or you mean like redirecting to a file or something like that, right? I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to figure out how it would be beneficial. So you yeah. So look all of these files and then take them and move them to a new direct or a new fo file. Folder. Yeah. And so that's what we did with um, the execute here, right? We found all the MP3s. Yep. Yeah. And you move and them. we move them. Right. But you can do other things. So let's say we moved our MP3s. But now we want a document, like, right? Have you ever gone through, like, back in the day, I don't know, early 2000s and stuff like that, when downloading MP3s or, or whatever, I don't know. Um, I, I don't do it anymore. But, like, then I would want to type up a list of all the MP3s yeah, I have, right? So that I have something to search for and stuff like that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. so far I just copied all my MP3s, but now I don't have that list. Your playlist. Well, well, it's really easy. All I have to do is I can do... Um, Star MP3. You're talking about like back when people had iPod or what are they called? Yeah, right, 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 or something like that. But you can still kind of do it. Maybe you need a list of usernames, or I mean, whatever you're searching for. Maybe you're just your your boss wants the top 20 largest files on a system because there's hard drive is uh, getting full and he wants to evaluate which files to delete or move or back up or something like that. And so you just pipe it to a text file, right? So here, I'm just doing a. Uh, Music list. Now, if I cat music list, music list, <laughs> dot list, I have a music list. I have a list of all my music. <laughs> That's awesome. Just like, yeah, like that. If you want to find out who your biggest donors are, because like if I'm you know working for a nonprofit, you want to find out okay, like who these are our biggest donors or gave over a thousand dollars or something like that, you can. You can do, yeah, it's, yeah. it's to whatever you can imagine um, is, is how you can use all of these. 